man beams last Sunday Where the Christmas lights burn all year long There's a manger seen out by the highway And I noticed the baby was gone If it had been taken By some children out fooling around But he told me that he's up in heaven And he's wearing a robe and a crown The king in the cradle It's no place for such majesty Cause when we keep the king in the cradle My friend, then there's no hope for you and for It got me to thinking About the way that I've treated God's son That I think of him only at Christmas And I put him away when I'm done But you don't the king in a cradle It's no place for such majesty Cause when we keep the king in a cradle My friend, then there's no hope for you My wife got a message Mrs. Bing said my old friend was gone In his will he left me a treasure That old manger he kept on his lawn The king in the cradle It's no place for such majesty Cause when we keep the king in the cradle My friend, then there's no hope for you and for me How's the family doing this morning? Amen. Hey, we just, I just want to thank the band. Holy smokes. What a, what, I tell you what, I didn't call them and tell them what I was preaching about this morning, but Nick, all I can tell you is you've got the Holy Spirit. The band has got the Holy Spirit because every song they did this morning went right along with what God's laid on my heart today. Uh, let's just go to the Lord and pray. Let's start this off in that way. Father God, uh, if we start this morning, Father God, just to open up your word. Uh, your word 
Father God, keep me out of the way and just make the words that you've laid in the, on these pages in front of me come to life in everybody's heart this morning. We just put this sermon, this whole day at your throne. We love you, we exalt you, in your precious name. Amen. Hey, Ron, can you mute this? I can remember preaching up here one time and had to blow my nose and y'all got to hear it all, so I just said, no, I ain't doing that again. <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you, uh, Branded is the people who did that song, King in the Cradle. And uh, what, I wanted, what I want to tell the church today, this church, our family, this church right here, when I, when I get up here to preach or when Reggie gets up here to preach, it's not like a normal church. In a normal church, half the people are asleep. In a normal church, there's everybody's, everybody's doing something different, thinking about what they got going on for that day. But what I can tell you here, when I preach or when I see Reggie preach, I look around and people are sitting on the edge of their chair, sucking in all of these words that God is just laying on you. Uh, I got to, and what I have to say, our church, is on a growing, we're growing. I mean, we're just, we're just growing by leaps and bounds. And that is such a good thing. Uh, and it's not just because Reggie. It's not just because Buster. It's not just because our lay pastors. It is a church family that loves the Lord, that shows people they love the Lord. They go out, they show what, who lives inside of them. Amen. I got to say thanks to Mark. Uh, he was the one that I asked him to put that video together for me on that song. And I, I'm going to tell you something, Mark, you blow me away. What I did uh, this morning for this sermon this morning, it's, it's a pretty basic sermon. It's a real basic sermon. But God laid this sermon on my heart, and I want you to pay attention, and I want you to grab every word that God got in front of me here because it's directly out of His Word that He left for each one of us. And what I want to tell you is each one of you should have got a piece of paper as you walked in with a lot of Bible verses on it. If you did get that, I hope you have one. If you don't have one, I suggest you pick one up on the way out because let me tell you something. In the front of my Bible, and I, don't, don't take this like I'm bragging, but in the front of my Bible, I have got so many little notes I just take and write them down. My Bible's got highlights in it. It's got pen marks in it. But in the very front, if you ask me a question about something, I generally can go to the front and look down that thing and find that little caption that says, go to John 3.16 or go to John 10.10, 10, whatever that is. I generally can go there. So what I did is I sat down at my computer and all week long, every morning when I get up, I'm a very slow typer. Just get, don't get, and if you see a typo there, it's okay. You just say, Buster ain't got it, and it, it's okay. But I, I, all week long, I, I began to put these verses in. And uh, this, is, this is about maybe a fourth of them that are in the front of my Bible that I've got little footnotes. And so I thought what we'd do this morning, uh, what happens, what is happening here at JBRC, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, is people here are getting it right with God. You're getting your life on on cue with God. You're getting your life right with Him. Uh, so I thought what we'd do is we'd just start off a little bit basic this morning. And I'm going to start with 1 John 1, 9. You, if you got it in front of you. If we, can, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So we know that that. Jesus Christ died on the cross. We do know that. We have to know that. And we have to know that Jesus Christ is alive today. He's not still in a cradle. He's not in a grave. But He is alive today. And he's, He wants to spend time with you. He wants to spend time with Buster. And we know if we believe that. And the other thing is we have to invite Jesus Christ into our heart. It. I had... I've served at other churches where people was just getting saved left and right, and it was good, it was great, but the church, some of the church members began to think that I was God. I am not God. 
It just happened that the Holy Spirit began to work in that church, and, and so everybody, the youth department began to get upset about what was going on with the college and career, and one thing after another, and it was crazy, but they began to bicker about the growth. And when they began to bicker about the growth, God pulled the plug. And it stopped. It dried up. So, we're going to, there's another verse that's going to go tie in with that, so we're going to get there in a minute. John 14, 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, what this is saying, you cannot go, you can't work your way, you can't go straight to God and say, God, I believe in you, but I don't believe in your Son. You can't do that. You have got to go through Jesus Christ, the Son, who died on the cross for your sins. You go through Him, Jesus, I know you're alive, and I want, you, and I want to invite you into my life. In Ephesians 2.8, it is for grace you have been saved through faith. Boy, and that, that's a real typo. And this is not for yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that, so that no one can boast through me. So what that says right there, you're not going to work your way in heaven, period. It is only by God's grace that he will, he will allow you to enter, enter in heaven. And, I've, and I've, I know people that think they can work their way in heaven. It ain't happening. After you've, you've invited Jesus Christ in your heart, go to first, first Peter. Boy, aren't you glad I got this printed out. I'd have you chasing that Bible all morning long. First Peter 1, and if I did this wrong, just tell me, I'll, you know, you can do it. Look it up and find the right verse. First Peter 1, 13. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Now, let me tell you something. I believe our church is pre preparing our life for action. It says, be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given to you. When Jesus Christ is revealed as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires that you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so you be holy in all that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. So we need to prepare our minds on what God is, is doing in our life. I'm going to get back to that in some verses later on. I'm just going to let that go for just a little bit. And then, you read this right here, it says, now this is Jesus talking to his disciples. He says, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the end of age. That is the great commission for us to go out into all the neighborhood, tell Jesus Christ, share Jesus Christ. No, let me, let me do this. Go out into the neighborhood and live Jesus Christ. Don't go share it. Live it. If you can live Jesus Christ, you really don't have to say anything at all whatsoever. I got a phone call this last week. One of those phone calls is a praise. And 18 years ago, listen to this, 18 years ago, I went to a hospital to visit a young man who was in a car accident. He was brain dead, and the only thing that had him alive was the machines running. One of his friends was there, and I asked his friend, I said, do you know if he is saved? And he said, no, I really can't answer that question. And I said, well, what about you? Are you saved? He said, yeah. I said, okay. Well, I get this call last week, and he said, Buster, do you remember 18 years ago when you met me in that hallway? And I said, yes, sir, I do remember that. I, 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 can, I remember that time. Very, very, it was very dear to me. He said, I know when you asked me I was saved, if I was saved, I answered you yes. He said, but that started me to evaluate my life to figure out where I was with Jesus Christ. And he said those words, just those words, are you saved? Three words, are you saved? Got me to thinking. And he said, I wasn't saved. And he says, I got my life right. After that. And he says, now, and he's, he's doing a lot of stuff for the Lord. His wife is working for the Lord. It's an amazing story that, that that's all I did was ask three words. Are you saved? 
I didn't, I didn't know that that was going to change his life. I had no idea that it was going to change his life. But just those words. And so what I'm telling you is, live Jesus Christ every day. Just live it. It's that simple. I get, I get these, oh, I, the Holy Spirit works on me a lot. And uh, I get these uh, vibrations or what God's telling me is just to go pray with somebody. I have no idea who they are. Holy smokes, I need to do better at that this year. When God says, Buster, you need to go pray with that person, I need to do it. I need to do it. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm letting God down. I'm, I, I did that this last week. I let him down. I'm kicking myself still for not just going to pray for somebody that I didn't know, didn't know what was going on in life, didn't have any idea. I should have just walked up and said, let me just pray with you. That's what I should. That's what God wanted me to do, but I didn't. And if you look at Philippians 4.13, I want you to look at that. I can do everything. I want you to understand this verse here. I can do everything through Him. It's not, I can do everything that Buster, Buster knows what he's doing. I can do everything because I know how to run a skill saw. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. And that strength comes, I don't know what you do for a living. I really don't. You may be a doctor. You may be a policeman. You may be a nurse. I don't know. But God gives you a particular talent to use daily. What? It, use it. It's that simple. If you're a carpenter, uh, I, I was with a friend of mine this last week, and every other word that come out of his mouth was GD. I struggled with that. I, I struggled with that, and I and I just said to myself, I I got to get away from this. I just I just can't do this. I can promise you, he wasn't living the way he should be living. That's all I want to say about that. Proverbs 3, 5, another one of my verses that I just reach in that Bible and grab this is up in front of my Bible, is trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. I can tell you that I use that verse in the buster life every day. Don't lean on what I think, lean on what God thinks, what God wants to do. Let God work through me, however that is. Forget what I'm doing and let God deal, deal with it. And then for you young parents that still have got Arabs, Ahabs and Arabs and little kids running around your house and pulling on your shirt coat, and when you get so tired of them, you want to send Johnny to his room, go to your room, shut the door, I don't want to hear from you. That's not what God has in store for you. The Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go, and when he is old, he won't depart from it. And let me just tell you something about that particular verse right there. My mama raised a child in the way he should go. And let me tell you something, this child departed from it. And he went and lived his own life. He was the product of the child. He went and he did everything that he could to really get through this old, what I thought was just ever, was hunky-dory. But I can tell you, Jesus brought me to my knees. And I have come back. And I said, God, I am so sorry for doing what I've done. I, there are so many things that in my life that the Holy Spirit brings to my attention. I have to say, God, I'm sorry for doing that. This happened 40 years ago. And I, God... I'm really sorry for stealing that, whatever it was at that time. I, I, I ask for forgiveness, and sometimes I ask for forgiveness more than once and that, because my brain don't remember stuff like it's supposed to anyway. But that's, that's another one. But anyway, this is another verse, and, I, and this morning, I, 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 God laid some people on my heart to just spur them on, get my spurs out, and just dig in. But it says on Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, so let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Let us encourage one another. Spur each other on. How are you doing? I had a preacher come up to me one time and said, uh, this is back in the day when I wasn't doing anything right and I was living my own life. And he says, Buster, what's God doing in your life? You know what my answer was? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Holy smokes, I tell you what. Uh, well, I'm, I'm thankful that I, I'm not there. I'm just, whew, I'm just, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. All right, Philippians 2, 14, 16. Now this is, I'm talking to you people, the Christians, the J Bar C body, the, the family. Listen to this. Do Please listen to this. I, I, wife, I know you're at home watching. Listen to this. 
I love you though. Remember that, baby. <laughs> I'm not going to get lunch today. I just hate to tell you that. <laughs> it says, do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become famous and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which, oh, listen to this. Listen to this. In which you shine. Shine like stars in the universe. As you hold out for the word, in order, now listen to this, in order, this is what Jesus is saying, I want you to shine like stars in the universe. So on that day, I may boast on you that I didn't run my life for nothing. This is what he will say when Terry Winsett gets to meet Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, God, what J Terry Winsett has been doing at J Bar C. He is living his life for the Lord. And when I, when I get there to meet Jesus Christ, I don't want him to say, Buster, you really messed up. I, I don't want to hear those words. I want him to say, enter into my kingdom. Well done, my faithful servant. Isaiah, the next, flip it over. I think flip it over. Is that right, Isaiah? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the earth, and will not grow weary. And his understanding, no one can understand it. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow weary and tired, and young men st stumble and fall. But those whose hope is in the Lord, listen to this, holy smokes, you need to listen to this. But those whose hope is in the Lord, he will renew their strength, they will soar like wings of an eagle. They will run and not grow. I mean, they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. An eagle. I'm fixing to have to have you mute, mute this thing one more time. Excuse me just for a second. Time out. I'm sorry, when my eyes leak, my nose runs, I don't know. And I hate for you listening to me snip all through the circus. So I try to get it cleared out here and we go on with it. Okay, soaring on the wings of an eagle. I, let me, have, how many of you have ever actually seen an eagle? I need to see that. How many of you ever actually? Holy smoke, magnificent. Have you, ever, have you seen the wingspans on those things? The wingspans are magnificent. Did you know an eagle is the only bird that will fly into a hurricane? He is the only bird. Every other bird is going to stay put, but an eagle will fly in a hurricane. Unreal. Hebrews 13.1. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Don't forget to, and I love this, holy smokes. I love, this, is, this is one of my favorite verses. I, I, I got a lot of favorite verses, by the way, so you can figure that out. But don't forget... For entertaining strangers, by doing so, some people, listen to this, sir, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Have you ever done, thought about that? I can remember having a wreck one time, and and, uh, and uh, I had somebody hit me from the rear, and, and we was going way down, I mean, we was going, and I can remember spinning around in circles in the vehicle, and I can remember thinking, oh my God, I just hope this thing stops sometime. And and I and I, in shock and all and all that kind of stuff on the side of the road, there was two people that come up there to to check on me and see if I was okay. And uh, I, I was hurt. And uh, I remember getting out of the beat. I, they tried to get me to stay put, and I just told them I had to get out of the vehicle because I wasn't sure if it was going to blow up because the bumper was in the back seat. And uh, anyway, I got out of the vehicle, and the, and they just disappeared. I didn't see them again. I, didn't, I wasn't able to thank them for checking on me and making sure I was okay. I couldn't find them. Coincidence? Heck no. John 7, 38. Another one of my favorite verses. If anyone is thirsty, let him come and drink. Whoever so believes in me, as the scripture says, streams of living water will flow within him. Now, I'm telling you, I don't need you to go tell people about Jesus Christ. I need you to live Jesus Christ. Streams of water, living water, will flow from you somehow. God may use 
Are you saved? I don't know what He's going to use on you. I don't. But He will use. If you can allow Jesus Christ to live in your life, streams of living water is going to flow from you. Period. John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they will have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ wants you to have abundant life. He wants you to live, and I, and I am living proof, I live this life to the fullest. I, if I'm at home and if I'm in an airplane, if, I, if you ever see my airplane sticking out of a barn somewhere, Buster got it done. I'm going to tell you, I live my life. I am not scared. I live my life to the fullest every day. I just enjoy life. I enjoy you people. John 15, 5. Listen to this right here. This is another one of those verses. I, I had, this is kind of what I was talking about at this church that I went to. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the true gardener. He cuts off every branch that does not bear fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it. I don't know about you guys. I don't like being pruned, but God prunes me. Now, there's some things that he has to get rid of out of the buster life. There's some things he does for me that I got to get rid of. But he prunes me. So that I'll be more fruitful. So that if he remains in me and I'll, he said, I'll remain in you. No branches can bear fruit it by itself. You cannot do it by yourself. You must stay connected to Jesus Christ, your Lord. He says you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. God has to live in your life. You need to remain in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. We're going to get to do that today. We're going to do some baptisms after church, uh, right at the end of this service today. And do me a favor, whatever we do. When we get to that part, don't run out. Sit here and just glorify with these people that are getting baptized today. If, you're Jesus, if you have Jesus Christ in your life, you are a new creation. I am no longer Buster Well, I don't know what I am, but I have Jesus Christ living in me, and that's what I enjoy. I love Him. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard people tell you, well, there's just too many rules in that, in, to be a Christian. You can't have fun anymore. Uh, you know, I just can't have fun. Let me tell you something. You are going to be hard-pressed to have more fun than I do. And here's where they get this. De Deuteronomy 5, 7. And I, I did this in cowboy quotes. This is, this is the Ten Commandments. He says, have no other gods before me. Just have one God, Jesus Christ. You better not have a bass boat that is your God. You better not have a deer lease that is your God. Honor your ma and your pa. And that's back in the olden days. And what this says today is honor your mother and father. Go ahead, slap your kids. Those of you that think your kids are asleep, slap him right now and say, you listen to him. There you go. This one this right here says, no telling tales or gossiping. Holy smokes. And no telling tales is just telling lies, okay? That's day to day time of don't gossip, okay? Get yourself to the Sunday meeting. Get up and go to church. He says, let's continue meeting together. And that's when we come on, we spur each other on here at this church. I'm going to spur you on today. If I can dig into you, I'm going to dig in and say, come on, go get them. Put nothing before God. Don't put anything. Put God, number one, in your life. Number two ought to be your family. But number one should be Jesus Christ. It ought to be number one in your life. I love this one right here. Let me just see some this verse right here. And I'm guilty. Don't mind telling you. I, I lived a life that wasn't pleasing to God, and I'm guilty. But it's, it says, no fooling around with another man's girl or another, man, or another woman's husband. Our biggest problem today is, is we have come into a society where our marriages now, day and time, are disposable. We have disposable diapers. We don't have to wash diapers anymore. We have disposable, uh, I tell you, you go have surgery at the hospital, they're going to give you the instruments that they used on you because they can't use them again. Everything is disposable, and that's what we think about our wife. If it don't work out, I'll just divorce her. Really? The Bible says... You can't have two gods. You can't. You go ahead and smile. It's all good. I got you. <laughs> Bible says you can't have... You, I'm going to tell you something. I'm guilty. You cannot have an affair with somebody else and make your marriage work. It will not work done. You cannot. What you have got to do is you cannot hang out with something like that 
You need to put your wife on a pedestal. You need to put your husband where he belongs. He ought to be the head of the household. Put them where they belong and make your marriage work. Make her the jewel of your crown. My wife is the jewel of my crown sometimes. I'm, no, I'm sorry. All the time. My, she heard that. I'm, I'm not eating today. Y'all got some extra food. Let me know. Uh, but... Your wife or your husband, they need, to be, they need to be right up there at the top with you. They need to be right there. This one right here, I'm good with. I can do this one right here. No killing. Don't go kill anybody. I'm, I'm not guilty there. Y'all got that one under control. Most of us can say we hadn't done that. I, I know a few of you. Know, I don't. <laughs> Watch your mouth and don't use God's name in vain. That's what I put in there. Don't use his name in vain. Watch your mouth. My, uh, one of my biggest problems is... is when somebody starts making me mad, I can start, I can spit some things out pretty quick. But what I've got, God created something in Buster. My hair starts to stand up in the back of my neck. And when that happens in my life, I just, I'd reach back there and pull it back down. And I said, we're going to come back and visit on this at a later date. But right now, because what fix and come out of my mouth is not going to be wholesome and pleasing to you. So I'm going to walk away and we will regroup on this. That is the best thing you can do is just when you feel that coming on, regroup. Because what, and, and see, it's okay to say that. Go to your wife and say, what's fixing to come out of my mouth is not going to be wholesome or pleasing to you. So what we're going to do, I see you smiling, Connie. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this at a later time. We're going to talk about this later. But right now, what I'm fixing to say is not going to be good. All right? Don't take what is not yours. Don't steal. Do not steal. Don't be hankering for another buddy's stuff. Don't covet. That's what it says. Just don't. Steve Alochi's got a real nice tractor, but he can still have it. I got one better than his anyway. I, no, <laughs> no, Steve. <laughs> don't covet. You really don't need to covet. You just need to live your life with God. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Be on the guard. Be on your guard. I love this right here. Stand firm. Stand firm. And let me tell you something. If you're living a life that's not firm, you've you got a fence right between your legs, and you cannot stand firm when your legs are straddling the fence. you either got to get on the fence, get over it, or get off of it. One of the two. Stand firm in the faith. Be people of courage. Be strong and do everything. Listen to this. Guys, mamas and dads, friends, do everything in love. I love you, my, my son, but you're fixing to get a spanking from this bad belt because you didn't, you messed up. And that's okay. It's, God says it's okay to do that, but they need to know what they, but do it out of love. Absolutely. When you talk to your wife, do it out of love. If something's going on, do it out of love. Absolutely. 1 Corinthians 5, 11. I'm going to, yeah, let me just go ahead and go there. 1 Corinthians 5, you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother, but sexually, uh, calls himself a brother, but is sexually immoral, or greedy, or a slander, or a drunkard, or a swindler. With such men, don't even eat. And here's where people get hung up on this verse right here, and, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it for you. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. He was up in a sycamore tree. He was a tax collector. He was a swindler. He was a bad dude. He cheated people. He'd done everything he did. Jesus Christ walks up to him and says, Come down. I'm going to your house today. The Holy Spirit took over in Zacchaeus' life. And Zacchaeus paid back everything that he did. This verse, if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, sometimes you have got to change your friends. I'm going to just put it this way. If you have a friend that you go over to their house and they pull up pornography on their internet and you get to sit there and enjoy that with them, you need to find another friend. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. If you have a friend that's cheating on his wife and, and you're going to go out to the bars with him and y'all are going to do something like that, you can't do that. You need to find another friend. If that friend is going to drag you from where you're at to his level, don't go there. If you can go to that friend who is a, uh, and give him words of encouragement, but don't allow him to drag you into his world, you need to do that. You need to be the Jesus Christ that visits Zacchaeus and say, you need to get off your horse and come down here. There's somebody that needs, you need to know about this guy. I'm not, I'm not telling you to stuff Jesus Christ down anybody's face. I'm not. 
I've tried that. It don't work. What I can tell you this morning, live Jesus Christ, period. Live it. It's that simple. Now, just for time's sake, uh, this morning, I, I've got three more verses that I'm not going to just, I'm going to just go there with it for just a minute. You don't have these. So anyway, you're welcome. Do me a favor. That, that piece of paper I gave you is please just fold it up, put it in your Bible, because it's a pretty handy piece of paper. You can look for stuff real quick. There's, there's four more verses that we're going to go to. Just write it down. Philippians 2.12 is one of them. It says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear, with, trem with trembling and fear. For it is God who works in you. He will act according to his good, good purpose. So everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become pure children of God, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like the stars of the universe in the order that I can boast on you again. That verse right there, I just I know I repeated it and it's okay, but I want you to shine like stars in the universe. Don't argue, complain. Live Jesus Christ. Matthew 8, 23. Love this verse right here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tell you something about this verse whenever we get to it, but let me read it to you, 8.23. This is where the disciples got in the boat. Jesus is in the boat. He's up to the front of the boat. He's asleep. The waves come up, and I mean the waves are capsized in the boat, and they're fixing to sink. Okay, this is where we're at, Matthew 9.23. Then he got in the boat, and the disciples followed him without warning, without a, listen to this right here, without a warning. I want you to kind of lock in on that. Without a warning, a furious storm came up in the lake so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was asleep. The disciples went over and woke him up saying, Lord, save us. We are going to drown. Jesus said, Oh, you of little faith. Why are you afraid? There's no being afraid in Jesus Christ. Just say it. Then Jesus got up and rebuked, rebuked the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this, even the winds and the waves obey him. Without warning, storms come up in a Christian's life. It said, the Bible says it's going to rain on, it rains on the good people and the bad people. But without a warning, there's going to be a storm that comes up in your life that you are not ready for. The disciples looked at Jesus, and they could not. They, now, the disciples have been with Jesus. He's already healed people. He's already probably brought them back to life. He has, he has taken the cripple that couldn't walk. He's already made them walk. The disciples got to see all this, and yet they were astonished that the waves and the wind settled down whenever they asked him. So what I'm going to tell you this morning is, when the waves start to rage in your life, don't come to me. You go immediately to Jesus Christ and say, God, the storms of my life are about to capsize my boat. I need some help. He is faith. He is just. He's going to get in the boat. I don't know what your circumstance is. I can tell you, I can really tell you that everyone in here has got a circumstance in their life that's going on right now. They, and, and they may be holding it in. But I'm going to tell you, don't come to me. Go to God. Go straight to God and just say, God, this storm's overwhelming me and I need some help. Philippians 4, 4. As you live, as you, I'm going to repeat that, as you live Jesus Christ. J. Bar C. family, as you live Jesus Christ from this day forward, because I'm trying to get you to live this life, okay? I don't want you to, I don't want you to just, I want you to live it. Rejoice, Lord, always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Listen to this. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything you do, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, I'm going to just quit right there for just a second. Here's, here's where the problems arise in the buster life. I'm very good at going to God and saying, God, I've got a, I've got a storm in my life and I need some help. I'm very good at that. I'm, I'm really good at that, matter of fact. But when the sun shined yesterday for the first time in a while, I guess it was yesterday, I don't remember what day it was, but when the sun shined and the rains quit for just a minute, I just walked outside and I said, thank you, Jesus, for such a beautiful day. Give God thanks in everything. Everything that happens to you that's good, tell Him about it. When you need Him, call Him. 
And the peace, now listen to this, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Now, if you got something going on in your life, you know it's a sin, whatever that is. Now, I don't know, and I don't, that's not my problem. That's yours and between you and God. If you've got a problem going on in your life, you're living in sin and you know it, you will never find peace. You will not find peace until, until you give that to Jesus Christ and say, God, I'm done with it. I can't, I, I, I know we've had, I, I, we've had some people in our church and stuff, that issue with drugs, da, 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 da. a lot of things go on in the church life. It really does. I can't, t- I can't answer to drugs because I, I, I don't have that problem. I never had that problem. The only thing I can identify with was smoking. I, used to, I started smoking when I was 17, and I smoked till I don't know, 30-something 30, 30 years old. And, and, I mean, I could smoke with the best of them. I got tickled in the preacher one time. He says, well, smoking don't send you to hell. It'll just make you smell like you've been there. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, that's what I could identify with. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to throw that in. I'm sorry. It was good. It was good. So anyway, I quit smoking for two years. Absolutely. I mean, I was smoke-free for two years. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I thought a cigarette would taste so good. I said, I'm going to just take one cigarette and it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. I just well, went and bought a whole case of cigar, cigar, cigarettes, I'm sorry, and smoked, put the whole pack in my mouth and smoked it because that's what happened. I went right back to smoking. I quit again for one year. Same identical thing. I went back and said, I'm just going to take one. Just one. I'm just going to smoke one cigarette and it's okay. I'm going to get by with it. Started smoking again. The last time I finally quit smoking, I just said, okay, God, this is something that I'm tired of doing. I smell like I've been there. I need to get rid of this habit. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. If you smoke, I'm okay with that. That's not my problem. Uh, it's not going to send you to hell. It will not send you to hell. But in Buster's life, he needed to quit smoking. And I did. I quit smoking. And I hadn't picked up another one since, and I refused to pick up a cigarette. You'd have to sh- I think you'd have to shoot me if he's going to put a cigarette in my mouth. And I want to end today's sermon on this. Luke 9, 61. Another one of my favorite sermons. Favorite verses in the Bible. This is where quitting smoking. This is where quitting pornography. This is where where you quit being alcoholic. This is where you quit cheating on your wife. This is where whatever is going on in your life, whatever it is, whatever it is, I don't know what it is, Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service of the kingdom of God. When you hook onto that plow, you make that decision. Don't you ever look back. Do not look back. You hook onto that plow, you look up in front of you, you put Jesus Christ up there and you say, okay, we're fixing to plow some new ground that I have never plowed before and I am not going to look back. That's what you need to do with your life. Hook on to the plow, look forward, get rid of whatever it is, and never look back. Never look back. Guys, that's what God laid on my heart today. It is, uh, I hope you guys stoked this in just like a sponge. I hope you did. Uh, if you want me to talk with you or spend some time with you, just, just meet me after service. I'll be glad to talk to you. We're going to do some baptisms this morning, though. I, I'm going to, and we, uh, where's my, uh, Steve, come up here, brother. Where you at? Somebody go get Steve. There he is right there. Never mind. Here comes Steve. We got some baptisms this morning, and, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. And I'll I tell you what, before we hit the baptisms part, let's just go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Well, let's do that. Father God, uh, We just want to stop this morning and just acknowledge your presence, Father God, that you are here. And thank you for your love and compassion for Buster. Thank you for your love and compassion for JBRC Cowboy Church here. Father God, and if you're a sinner, if you're lost, and you want to just invite Jesus Christ in your life, you've got to know that Jesus died on the cross for you. He's alive and well today, and all you've got to do is just say, Father God, I know I'm a sinner. Just pray this with me. Father God, I know I'm a sinner. And I'm going to invite you into my life. 
I want you to come and live in my life and change. Give me the peace that passes all understanding. Father God, I want to live you in my life. In your precious name.